May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. July 2, 2023, 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time A reading from the second book of Kings. Now it happened that, on a certain day, Elisha passed by Shunem. And there was a great woman there, who took him to eat bread. And since he frequently passed by there, he turned aside to her house, so that he might eat bread. And she said to her husband, I have noticed that he is a holy man of God, who passes by us frequently. Therefore, let us prepare a small upper room for him, and place a bed in it for him, and a table, and a chair, and a lampstand, so that when he comes to us, he may stay there. Then it happened that, on a certain day, arriving, he turned aside into the upper room, and he rested there. And he said, Then what does she want that I might do for her? And Gehazi said, You need not ask. For she has no son, and her husband is elderly. And so he instructed him to call her. And when she had been called, and was standing before the door, he said to her, At this time, and at this same hour, with life as a companion, you will have a son in your womb. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The mercies of the Lord I will sing forever. I will show forth thy truth with my mouth to generation and generation. For thou hast said, Mercy shall be built up forever in the heavens, thy truth shall be prepared in them. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed is the people that knoweth jubilation. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance, and in thy name they shall rejoice all the day, and in thy justice they shall be exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy good pleasure shall our horn be exalted. For our protection is of the Lord, and of our King the Holy One of Israel. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that those of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? For through baptism we have been buried with him into death, so that, in the manner that Christ rose from the dead, by the glory of the Father, so may we also walk in the newness of life. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live together with Christ. For we know that Christ, in rising up from the dead, can no longer die, death no longer has dominion over him. For inasmuch as he died for sin, he died once. But inasmuch as he lives, he lives for God. And so, you should consider yourselves to be certainly dead to sin, and to be living for God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter above me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever will have lost his life because of me shall find it. Whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet, in the name of a prophet, shall receive the reward of a prophet. And whoever receives the just in the name of the just shall receive the reward of the just. And whoever shall give, even to one of the least of these, a cup of cold water to drink, solely in the name of a disciple, Amen I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord.
Reflection What does it mean to truly find oneself, by losing oneself for the sake of Christ and others? Whoever finds his life, will lose it. And whoever will have lost his life because of me, shall find it. Matthew 10 verses 37 to 39 Clearly, this saying is a play on words that is meant to make you pause and think. It's almost like a holy and sacred riddle spoken by Jesus to get your attention and to communicate a very deep and foundational truth about how you are to live. Essentially, this saying teaches that those who live in a selfish, self-centered way do not accomplish their goal. The goal of those who are selfish is to elevate themselves with the thinking that this is what is best for them. But Jesus clearly points out that when you live selfishly, seeking to put yourself above others, you lose what is most important in life. You lose your very soul. On the contrary, if you live selflessly, putting others before you, it is in this act that you actually find your true purpose in life and fulfill yourself on the deepest level. Think for example, of Jesus. He is God, the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, existing for eternity in perfect union with the Father and the Holy Spirit. His soul radiates pure love. And for that reason, he chose to become human, suffer greatly and be killed. Was that fulfilling to our Lord? Most certainly. Why? because his sacrifice went to the heart of who he is. He is love itself. And love is always self-giving. It is always fulfilling. It always seeks the good of the other. Love fulfills the lover when it is pure, holy, selfless and total. Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross not only redeemed us, but it also manifested the Son of God's own perfect fulfillment and satisfaction in his human nature, because his death was an act of pure love. Sin confuses us. Selfishness especially, clouds our thinking. As a result, it becomes difficult to clearly see that the way to fulfillment in life, is by the complete and unwavering sacrifice of our lives given to others, in imitation of and in union with Jesus' perfect sacrifice. The moment that sin leads us to think first about ourselves, we begin to become blind to who we are, and what makes us truly fulfilled. Reflect today, upon the divine mission, you have been given to lose yourself for the sake of Christ, which is for the sake of true love. By loving God and others in this pure way, selflessly, you become who you are, and who you were created to be. You find yourself only by choosing to lose yourself in this world. Ponder this deep mystery and believe it. Once you do believe it, commit to live sacrificially, casting aside every doubt, so that you will never hesitate to love everyone sacrificially. For in that radical act of selfless love, you will discover and become who you were created to be. Let us pray. My sacrificial Lord, you are not only the perfect model of human love, your sacrificial love is the source of human fulfillment itself. Please give me the grace I need to love all people in a perfect and selfless way, and in that act, also discover and become who I was made to be. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.